Wish that Fallout 76 was actually a good MMO? Look no further than Fallen Earth, a post-apocalyptic MMORPG set in the American Southwest in which there's magic and horseback fighting. It'll make sense soon. It's free to play, has very positive reviews on Steam, and recently has experienced a population surge. So we'll cover what you need to know, including combat, difficulty, depth, world building, monetization, and more. We'll discuss how to support this series at the end. Yet for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Subscribe for more MMO content, and thanks for watching. Character creation is as you'd expect for an older MMO, in which you can choose between two genders, modify a range of visual options, and dress in a costume of your design. However, men can opt for body hair, whereas women can opt for piercings. Obviously, this game was not made for a German audience. The music is a perfect sonic representation of what we're about to experience. It evokes dark industrial intensity contrasted with the brightness of such games like Chrono Trigger. Take a listen. As we load into the tutorial, the current developers have forgotten to update their loading graphic because there is, in fact, no monetization. But we begin in the Hoover Dam. Sound design is immediately impressive. Steps on the steel floor resonate accordingly. In opening your bag, sounds like you're rummaging through leather containers. Graphics options are surprisingly robust, and exiting a menu produces a sharp zipping sound. Traversing uses the conventional WASD model, and thus is immediately accessible. Frame rate is stable at 120. First impressions are good. A radioactive icon draws our attention. Note the instructions here that I failed to see while playing. Once nearby, we're prompted to either skip the tutorial or kill a clone dissector. This scene is a perfect representation of Fallen Earth, so pay close attention. Fallen Earth suffers from the juxtaposition problem. Its sound design, world building, and RPG systems are well done, yet combat and difficulty can diminish the quality of our experience. But since I did not see the note to push Y to go back from aim mode, I'm stuck and figure relogging will be easier than fiddling with the settings. Once in, we're directed to the terminal again, and we're given instructions. We don't have much time, so I need you to listen to me. On the next computer, there's a region pod control terminal. Not only is the voice acting superb, it reinforces in-game lore. This is significant because the game takes its world seriously. Moreover, Fallen Earth protects the RPG in the MMO, as you are able to select various options in the dialogue to learn more about the situation. After defeating the surprise dissector a second time, you activate the computer under which he was working. To reiterate that his body is now a corpse, bugs quickly amass above, which add to the grim setting. Listen to the sound design. We learn that turning on the computer has restarted the cloning cycle, which becomes pivotal. Being a clone and activating the renewal cycle is an in-game justification for respawning wrapped in a perfectly acceptable story. I wish all MMOs had this degree of lore-friendly explanation. Moreover, the forces of General Alex are being attacked by the mutant children of the apocalypse. We're told to go down the steps and through the hall, which reinforces the assumption being teased, waiting for the conversation to end. Citizens, we are on lockdown. Any unauthorized personnel outside of the living quarters will be shot on sight. Thank you. At least she said thank you. This cynical politeness is exactly the type of communication one could expect in a scenario like this, and they absolutely nailed it with a fantastic comedic twist. But it's time to get out of here. Near the door is a dumpster with Chota, written in the blood of bodies that lie before it, with a head on a spike in front. This must have been done by the children of the apocalypse and foreshadows the foes about to be encountered. There is also a story-driven way to justify how we find a weapon. One is stuck in the skull of a victim. Apparently, we have to loot the entire body to extract the axe, and we also learn an ability, Disrupt 1. Fallen Earth uses an older school D&D-style mechanics, including saves. Moreover, its values are low and accessible, so it's easier to track numerical progression. Under the hood, this is the type of MMO I love playing. We stumble upon Sarah, who explains why they're idly kneeling behind barricades. They're out of ammo. But since we're a clone, it doesn't matter if we die, since another would be generated. It's the pragmatic decision that we're now the solution to their problem, defeating white crow mercenaries blocking the door. 
It seems like the writers have been trained in ethics, because this situation is essentially a post-apocalyptic version of Socrates' debt dilemma. While visually static, credit where credit's due. Since our character is left-handed, they properly extend their left leg to balance the weight distribution on the axis downswing, so attention to detail continues. Moreover, there is a headshot system, so focus players can be more effective. Additionally, similar to D&D Online, which was released a few years prior, there is no auto attack. We loot a key to enter the next room that teaches us that items looted have an effect in the game world. Watch what happens next. Mobs apparently have line of sight because it did not see us nor respond as I approached, but now that we have a gun, we need to equip it. When wielded, it drapes over your shoulder, a detail I adore. To equip, push control and move up or down the mouse wheel. The circle becomes an aiming reticle and you suddenly realize that combat may have way more depth than previously thought. On the top of your screen, you can see the amount of ammo left in a clip with the total amount you have, so we'll have to manage it accordingly. Watch this setup. And be careful. All units, report to the command center, now! As combat rolls in the background, notice that the audio design forecasted the looming battle, and the soundtrack immediately erupts with percussive energy. Still more, just after looting a sniper rifle, we are taught through gameplay how to use it. MMO developers, this is how you teach players your game. Superb pedagogy. However, you saw that my first shots were ineffective. There is a range at which attacks are not registered, so you have to ensure that you're close enough to deal damage. While this balancing decision likely exists to prohibit people from trivializing content, it equally breaks the fantasy of using this type of weapon. As we move through the arena, we realize that the prior clone versions of ourselves must have been operated on in this very room. Watch this. As we were running through the organ harvesting lab, we were assaulted by a group of snipers. Flooded with damage, we need to take cover. This is a perfect example of a game teaching you that enemies are dangerous and that you must outsmart the situation to be successful. This sniper vs sniper scene adds an additional layer to combat. Instead of shooting at enemies distracted by tanks, you now must face mobs actively aiming back at you. Wagfu's combat tutorial is similarly effective, and all MMOs should take note of this effective pedagogy. After the ranged mercenaries have been defeated, we're encouraged to meet the acolytes who, unlike the medical scientists we slaughtered moments before, are utilitarian experts in healing. We need med kits, which function like potions in other games. Additionally, we learn more about the general of the dam. The clones were of people who have been affected by Shiva's touch, a pseudonym for mutations. Apparently, these individuals also formed various factions, including Chota and the Light Bearers. This explains like we can learn various abilities and justifies the RPG infusion into a real world game setting. And then the plot thickens. Not fall. Prepare to die with honor. <laughs> Arrow size got a bomb in the motor pool. Of course, there's a bomb. Moreover, for an unknown reason, we suddenly learn an array of new abilities without explanation or indication of how they should be used. But we find Harvey, who will help us escape before the bomb detonates. A detail I appreciate is he runs as fast as we do. The developers should be celebrated for not making the typical canonical mistake. In a surprisingly jarring twist, when we try to ride the ATV, a small text note says you don't have the knowledge for this action. It's clear that it's intended that we fight through the ambush, yet this is another example of the juxtaposition problem. There's no reason why we couldn't hop on the ATV and simply drive away. Be that as it may, this scene is a frantic sprawl. For its time, Fallen Earth's combat was on the leading edge. While Dungeons & Dragons Online led the pack with an action target combat system in 2006, most MMOs released around 2009 still used a rigid tab target system, whereas a few outliers pushed the envelope further. These included Age of Conan, Pirates of the Burning Sea, Darkfall, and Face of Mankind, a MMO some of us misremembered as Fallen Earth, yet is in fact a different title. While it's easy to heavily criticize Fallen Earth in comparison with Guild Wars 2 or Black Desert Online, for its time, it was innovative. 
After defeating the Underdwellers, we somehow learn how to ride an ATV, because that's obviously how everyone learns to drive four-wheelers. The animation blending also ensures that you can still aim with your rifle as you mount, so if more mobs are incoming, we're ready. We need to drive into the vault. And then this happens. We fail successfully by driving into the vault, yet still die in the process. This comes full circle in a moment, although we're presented with an impressively adequate cutscene. We won't watch it all here, although it connects the gap between what just happened to where we're going. If you want to watch it in its entirety, Josh Drive Hayes kept it in his coverage. While we're discussing Josh, it's important to note what I'm labeling the Strife Effect, by which there's a direct correlation between a positive video published by Josh and an associated jump in player numbers for that MMO. Path of Exile players are likely familiar with the Mathiel effect, by which certain items he plans to use in an upcoming lead become prohibitively expensive because player economists know there will be increased demand. We're now in post-tutorial Fallen Earth, and for the first time, I realize you can enjoy a first-person view. While I feel sorry for our avatar holding the rifle as such, this is another nice touch. I now have 30 AP to spend and the window presents a myriad of skills to level. I have no idea where to invest what, and to avoid making a mistake, I close the window instead. Remember the cloning device we rebooted at the very beginning? From the reconstruction room, we need to now choose where to go next. We have three options, each that cater to a particular type of player. Combat, support, and crafting. I ironically picked to help Chota, because you keep your friends close, yet enemies closer. Upon loading in, you speak with Abner, who starts you on another tutorial. This is a major pet peeve. MMOs should not have two tutorials back to back. Wakfu and Lord of the Rings Online both fail in this regard too. My impression is that multiple teams must have worked on these sections of the game independently, yet failed to communicate. Or, when the new tutorial was introduced later, they did not update the initial on-ramping to reflect what the player now knew. To be fair, if you recall, we were given the option to skip the initial tutorial at the very beginning, so I see why developers would want to ensure those players did not fall through the cracks. However, this is not the answer. As you leave the underground lair, the open world of Fallen Earth is revealed. They've nailed the dreary, ash shot and dismal ambience of a ruined planet, and you can feel the desolation around you. If you thought to yourself, this is Kinchi's and Fallout 3's baby, then you're in company. With that said, it is at this point that combat reiterates its shortcomings. Despite its deep RPG mechanics, innovative dual combat mode, and open-ended classless system, the scaling of each encounter quickly teaches you to find the lowest common denominator, which is simply to spam left-click while holding a ranged weapon. Special abilities or melee alternatives simply offer no comparable match. Admittedly, this is a problem with balance and not systems design. Arleth, for example, uses an older D&D Model 2 for combat, yet you're empowered to make ranged melee or a mix of both work without there being an obvious, most optimal route. Fallen Earth also has a harvesting and crafting system. Like in any other MMO, you kneel down for a few seconds to collect raw resources. Uniquely, however, the recipes you craft are done simultaneously as you play. You don't have to be in a city nor stuck at a crafting station. As you play, you can craft. I wish that more MMOs were directly influenced by this model. There's also a prone system that no one uses. The reward for crafting items results in a bridle, whose effect is Vehicle Generator Trigger, which presumably requires the same riding skill as the ATV. The riding animation is weighty, and you're able to fire while mounted. Since the world isn't level restricted, you're free to go wherever you can. I stumble upon Westreach that seems to be a reminder of the dualism that challenges every generation. The new versus the old, the rich and the poor, the city and the rural. In this case, the dilapidated farming neighborhood has stood the test of time better than the once marvel of a bridge engineering towering above. We rid the street of a gang of shiv brawlers and set our eyes towards something more challenging. This random large group of level 2 veteran mercenaries surely is a reasonable test of our abilities. Yet visually I am torn because just as Fallen Earth tries hard to have compelling world building and justified systems, in the same breath, corners are cut such as this group of mobs. There's no obvious reason why these difficult foes are here and why there are so many. 
This imbalance finds reference in someone's review that while Fallen Earth is better than New World, it's still hot garbage. I do not agree that the game is trash, although I can see why the jagged edges turn some off, and I can see why the game closed down once. But what's that story? Fallen Earth was released in 2009, so it was competing with MMOs with already established player bases, some of which already leveraged a mixed targeting system while having more engaging combat mechanics. The following year, titles like Mortal Online or Vindictus launched that not only looked more visually stimulating, yet whose combat system either felt more in-depth or more action-packed. It's unfortunately easy to see why Fallen Earth struggled. However, it did keep its doors open until 2019. 10 years after it first launched in September of 2009. Considering the average lifespan of MMOs that are fortunate even to launch, Fallen Earth has enjoyed a dedicated fan base for over a decade. Now that the genre has stabilized, some MMOers may wish to enjoy its bonafide RPG systems while stomaching the jank that may now be endearing. Moreover, in 2021, Little Orbit purchased the rights to the title, opening its gates to players once again, and you can play the entire game for free. Truly free, no cash shop, no item store. There is no way you can even give the developers money. This is unreasonably generous, and other reviewers have noted this extravagant gift. Even if there's an existing dichotomy of quality, what's to lose by enjoying an entirely free MMO? In the words of another, Fallen Earth is a really fun game and makes my nuts quake. I don't know what that means, yet apparently it's a good thing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time for more MMO content.